Good morning. Welcome to this overview of the Geotextile Sand Filter, or GSF. I'm Alex Mando, a technical specialist with Elgin Corporation. The GSF offers combined passive treatment and dispersal in the same field footprint. It's been in production since the 1980s, and over 100,000 systems are installed in 35 different states, every province in Canada, as well as Ireland, Sweden, and Australia. All of our products are manufactured right here at our facility in Windsor, Connecticut. The system as a whole is composed of our modules resting on a layer of specified sand with a four inch perforated distribution pipe over the top and everything covered by our provided gray geotextile cover fabric. The modules themselves are constructed of our black geotextile filter fabric woven over and under our cuspated plastic core, all held together with white straps. We have two different sizes. The A42 module shown here is four foot long by two feet wide, and the B43 module shown here is four feet long by three feet wide. Both are seven inches tall. The top of the module is denoted by a white stripe, as well as the fact that twice as much filter fabric is visible from the top and twice as much cuspated core is visible from the bottom. The GSF is a very versatile system. Many options for installation configurations are possible, including trenches and curved trenches, trenches on sloping sites, beds and mounds, as well as more exotic configurations, such as this raised bed on a sloping site. Several distribution methods are available for the GSF, including gravity, pump up to gravity or pump dosed, as well as pressure distribution. This versatility means that the GSF is a great tool for tough sites, such as those that need pretreatment, those with high groundwater or shallow bedrock, and those with poor soils or rapidly permeable soils. In addition, the fact that there is no startup period for the passive treatment means that the GSF is a great option for intermittent use cases such as vacation homes or summer camps. Also, the modules are very light and easily carried into tough sites. The GSF system meets the NSF-40 standard for treatment, putting it on par with such active measures as ATUs. This is accomplished through a two-stage process. First, biomat management and filtration within the modules using their vertical surfaces, and secondly, unsaturated flow from the modules through the sand layer into the native soils. In the first stage of treatment, the effluent passes from the distribution pipe down into the mini trenches that are created by the over and under weaving of the black geotextile fabric and the cuspated core. These mini trenches alternate with open air channels, which ensure a steady supply of oxygen, and the fabric provides a growth zone for the biomat, as well as providing mechanical filtration for the effluent that passes through it. The folded design of the GSF modules allows us to maximize the internal surface area and thus the biomat growth zones. It does this by sacrificing some of the bottom surface area to incorporate multiple sets of sidewalls. In this example, a set with three mini trenches manages to create almost double the infiltrative surface around the sides here of a standard square trench. In addition, the folded design provides two extra benefits, first being the creation of the uh, open air channels between the mini trenches, and second being the inclusion of mostly vertical infiltrative surfaces. These vertical surfaces are critical to biomat management within the GSF modules, and this picture of pier pilings is a good analogy for how. As the tide comes in and the water level rises, part of the vertical surfaces are submerged, and nutrients in the water cling to them. This attracts all manner of sea creatures, which also attach to the vertical surface and happily eat the food that they find there. Then, as the water level drops again, larger air-breathing organisms up here get to come down and eat them. 
The same cycle takes place within the GSF, just at a much smaller scale. As effluent is distributed into the module, it settles into the mini trenches, where the anaerobic bacteria that form biomat cling to the geotextile filter fabric. They do their job processing pathogens and removing nutrients from the effluent that passes through them, and then as the effluent level within the module drops, larger and more active aerobic bacteria eat away at the accumulated layer of biomat. This tidal action of sorts allows for the treatment of effluent while preventing the same sort of thick clogging biomat layer that could lead to reduced flow or eventually a failed system. After it has passed through the filter fabric, the effluent flows down through the specified sand in an unsaturated manner. This ensures a final pass of aerobic treatment as well as regulating the flow of the effluent to the native soils. Unlike a conventional system where the untreated effluent is applied directly to the native soils and biomat growth might lead to clogging, the GSF applies only treated effluent to the native soil and thus preserves the long-term acceptance rate of the soils. This allows for higher application rates and smaller footprints. This picture shows our NSF-40 test system at the uh, MassTech Testing Center. It was designed for 450 gallons per day, but unlike a house, which might only see about half of that on an ordinary day, it was dosed right at 450 gallons five days out of the week. The other two days a week were actually dosed at 600 gallons, so this system was pushed past its design capabilities. At the end of the 18-month trial, we dug it up and performed this autopsy. The darker stripes are a healthy biomat coat where the bottom of the mini trenches were in contact with the sand, and you can see that it looks nothing like the dark black sludge of a failed system. The lighter stripes are where the open air channels are, were and display no biomat growth at all. That a system could be pushed this hard for 18 months and still look essentially brand new gives us great confidence in the GSF system. Because the treatment is achieved passively, there is no maintenance required for the GSF field. Typical septic tank maintenance is still required, including pumping the tank and cleaning the effluent filter, as well as the maintenance required for any pumps or other equipment. The sand underneath and surrounding our modules is a major component of this treatment system. It provides the final aerobic zone that ensures we meet our treatment promise, as such, we specify ASTM C33 sand, or equivalent. It goes by many different names in different places, from river sand to 2NS sand to washed concrete sand, but the important thing is that it meets this sieve requirement for C33. The two finest sieve sizes are especially critical, as excess fines may wash down over time and reduce the long-term acceptance of the native soil. If you have any doubts about a specific sand, Send us a sieve report and we'll let you know if we think it's okay. For instance, this sand is far too fine and would not be acceptable. Conversely, this sand is on the coarse side. While unlikely to jeopardize the longevity of the system, it would allow effluent to flow too quickly from the GSF modules down to the native soils, resulting in potentially incomplete treatment. The GSF can be gravity fed, pumped to gravity dosed, or pressure dosed. Pump dosed systems offer a compromise, reducing the complexity and maintenance of a pressure system while retaining some control over the hydraulic loading and resting cycle. Here, a pump to gravity system allows the use of trenches on a sloped site. This second angle shows that the distribution box can be pump dosed and that each distribution pipe leaves the distribution box at the same level before dropping off to its respective trench. If pressure distribution is called for, we recommend a pipe and pipe configuration with the low pressure pipe, orifices up, laying inside a four inch perforated distribution pipe. This ensures even distribution along the system. Orifice shields are an acceptable alternative. This diagram illustrates the pipe and pipe configuration with your low pressure pipe or pressure lateral lying inside of the four inch distribution pipe. Here's a picture demonstrating the low pressure pipe splitting out into 
two laterals that will be in a bed. Because we rely on oxygen in the system to achieve full treatment, Eldrin requires a vent on any system that receives more than 18 inches of cover material, as measured from the top of the module. A vent is also required on any systems where the cover material is dense, clay-y, or could otherwise be assumed to inhibit oxygen transfer down to the modules. On a gravity or pump-to-gravity system, a vent can be created by simply routing the 4-inch distribution pipe vertically, continuing it upwards with solid pipe, and then capping it appropriately above grade. On a pressure distribution system, the vent can be created the same way. And while the low pressure pipe could be capped at the end of the lateral, bringing it up to grade provides easier access for potential maintenance. This can be done by matching the curve of the 4-inch pipe and coming up inside the vent, as shown here, or by exiting the 4-inch pipe at the end of the module and coming up as a separate pipe. If a vent is undesirable at the system location, venting away from the system is also acceptable, provided a positive slope is maintained on the solid pipe. Installation for the GSF is very straightforward. For a trench, first step will be to dig your trench out, then scarify the receiving soils, even if there's no visible smearing, to ensure easy transfer of the effluent through the sand soil interface. Next, place the sand in the trench in 6 inch lifts. After every 6 inches, stabilize the sand to prevent settling later. You can use a hand tamp, a plate compactor, machine bucket, or just walk on it really well. Then level the sand surface to the correct depth. The next step is module placement. Lay them in the trench with a white stripe up and ensure six inches of separation from the modules to any edge of the trench. As you can see here, the modules are H10 load rated, so walking on them is not an issue. Once the modules are in place, you can lay the distribution pipe on top. It doesn't have to be centered in each module, but it does have to run from end to end, not side to side, to ensure that the mini trenches can distribute the effluent laterally across the whole surface of the module. Next, secure the pipe to the modules with the provided wire hoops. Then use the supplied gray cover fabric to cover the modules and the pipe together. Next, secure the gray cover fabric with a few shovelfuls of sand every few feet. Make sure not to throw the sand alongside the pipe, as you might block the distribution holes with the gray cover fabric. Likewise, make sure not to create any tenting, as shown here. The gray cover fabric has a very high tensile strength, and if tenting is left, when the system is covered, the weight of the cover material will crush the pipes. Next, at the ends of the modules where the pipe has to stick out, cut the fabric so that it can be wrapped around the pipe and ensure complete coverage of the modules. Finally, you're ready to backfill and cover. Start by backfilling with sand up to the level of the top of the modules. You don't have to go any higher than that, you don't have to cover the pipe, but if you do have extra sand, it can be used on top of the modules. Then, cover. A bed installation is just as easy. Start by excavating the bed area and scarifying the native soils again with bucket teeth or rake. Place your sand in six inch lifts, stabilize it as you go and level it. Next, place the modules, ensuring white stripe is up. Be sure to follow your plan, permit or engineer drawing when spacing out the rows in the bed and ensure that there is at least one foot of sand between them. Next, place the distribution pipe on top of the modules, ensuring that the holes are at 6 and 8 o'clock, and secure it with the provided wire hoops. Then cover the modules and the pipe with the gray geotextile cover fabric, ensuring that it is centered on the pipe and that both sides drape down to the sand. Then secure the gray cover fabric with sand. The easiest way to ensure a nice vertical drape from the pipe down to the module 
is to place the sand directly on top of the pipe and let it fall off on either side. Then cut the fabric at the ends of the rows so that it can wrap around the pipes. Then backfill. Make sure to bring the sand up to the level of the top of the module in the entire bed area. Then you can cover and seed. As an example of the results we get, here's a sample that was taken after the six inches of sand that we require under all of our products. It's not quite drinkable yet. You can see that we are well on our way to clean water. If you have any questions, we're more than happy to answer them. You can look at our website, www.elgin.com, or you can always give us a call at the office at 800-444-1359. Have a great day.